I came into this not really kind of having a full-on game plan of what we were gonna talk about or whatever, and just the opportunity to sit there with him and chop it up for an hour. He doesn't just automatically get every listing appointment that he goes on. He doesn't just automatically get every single piece of business um, here in New York City. He's still a real estate agent out there who is trying to learn and grow. He told, he told a story about Park Avenue and Fifth Avenue. There's blocks down there that he doesn't sell in, so people think he's just some small broker, right? It's Ryan Serhan, he's been on TV for a decade. He's got a team of 130 people, and there's still people out there who think he's not big enough. the sit down with Sir Hant, especially now having the opportunity to go back and rewatch it and really like kind of internalize all of the stuff that he was saying and, and hear other people the way they took it. That experience now has become, it's just blossomed into a whole thing now because the way other people heard certain things, the way I heard it, and then, and then going back and watching it and seeing how many nuggets he was dropping, it was just, it's almost amplified the whole Sir Hant experience for me, man. It, it just, I can't believe how much of it is applicable to not just real estate, but what other, I mean, I, had, I have a buddy who's a principal at a high school in Utah reach out to me and he's like, man, there's so much good stuff in here that I can, that I can apply to my life right now. So that was easily the best experience was being able to sit down with him and just how candid he was, how honest he was. And then the fact that he's just selling real estate every day like we are and, you know, dealing with all the same stuff. It was just, it was really, really cool. I did a Facebook post while I was still in New York about how just insane the city itself was. And it makes it feel like, I even said in that post, the city seems impossibly dense. It seems impossibly huge. Like the, 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 the Central Park Tower, how skinny that thing is. None of it makes any sense. And yet there it all is staring you in the face, being there and really embracing it this time. It just showed me that nothing's really impossible. You know, those buildings and the fact that people can afford them is insane to almost everybody on the planet who didn't build those buildings or doesn't live in them, right? And yet there's people who can afford them and there's people who can build them. Then you're walking down the streets and you know, they figure out the trash in New York City. Like how the hell do they do that, right? Like it's just the whole thing logistically seems insane. It seems insane that it exists. The whole city just taught me that anything is possible. Realizing that all the excuses I give myself are kind of bullshit the majority of the time. And it was a nice realization to have. I, I, I didn't shy away from that like I normally do when I have to look myself in the mirror. I went into that conversation with Sir Hant nervous, like I think anybody would be when you're talking to somebody who has that kind of production level and stuff. But I went into it really expecting it to be very mechanics of real estate related, right? I, I thought I was gonna ask some some content questions and get some canned responses. And from the second he walked through the door, not only was he incredibly personal and put me at ease, I think I kind of expected that, right? The guy's on TV, he, he knows how to talk to people. Like I wasn't shocked by the fact that he like put me at ease, but the way he was able to articulate the stuff he deals with, talking about the Madison Avenue and the Park Avenue, you know, disappointment of not getting a listing over there and just being like, all right, well, I'll just, I'll go take a smaller one and then build it up and build it up, right? Like. That's what we all do in this industry every single day. And to hear it coming from him, that he did the same thing, it, it was it was really, really eye-opening. I think my perception was I was gonna go in there, I was gonna get like an hour's worth of lip service from this guy who's on TV. You know, he's gonna shake my hand and, and then turn me loose. And you can watch the video back now. It's he was He was making eye contact the whole time. He was engaged the whole time. He gave thoughtful answers. They weren't, they weren't canned answers to, to the questions and the conversation that we were having. And, and I just think my perception of it going in was that it was going to be, there was gonna be a barrier between he and I. And I felt like that barrier did not exist after, the first four minutes were a little awkward, but after we got first those first four or five minutes, it was just like I was sitting down with somebody who had all kinds of conversations with my life. And, and, and I was not expecting that at all. The biggest piece of feedback I got from friends and, and about the interview and, and a lot of real estate agents. And I think it was my biggest realization was how much he still deals with the exact same thing 
that I deal with on a daily basis, right? He still has to go in and justify his numbers and justify his sales and, and be able to, to, to speak to a seller. You know, the New York market's so different. It, you have to be a real marketer to sell there, right? It's just a totally different environment. And, and f to understand that, like, when he got on Bravo on the show, he had only been licensed for 18 months. He didn't care, right? Everything he did was just acting like he was supposed to be there. And he wasn't doing it in an arrogant way. He tells a story about the, the production team at Bravo just trying to be there to help them make it a little bit easier, right? He, the amount that he comes from contribution and pours into other people is what we all need to be doing in our business, right? Not just, not just with clients, because that's really obvious one. I think it's incredibly important, but coming from contribution and not just bullshitting them all the time is a huge part, but he does that in everything in his business, right? Everything in his life, from the TV show all the way to the brokerage and to the agents who come and sit in the hot seats. And, and that really, really came through when, when he was just talking about building the brand and what he expects out of his agents and his admin staff and some of those parts of the interview that didn't really seem as flashy, what really came through to me was he is doing everything that we are told to do every day. And you look at somebody like him and you think that he's probably graduated out of having to do all this difficult stuff and he just hasn't, right? The reality is he's doing it at a higher level than he's ever done it before. He's doing it with and for other people. And that really resonated. And that was the thing that I got the most comments from agents about was, I'm shocked at how much of the business, the real estate business, he is still ingrained in. And I also think that's really telling of somebody at his level of success, right? He's not doing anything different than we do it. Bigger numbers, for sure. Sexier properties sometimes. But at the end of the day, he is doing the exact same thing that we all do on a daily basis. And, and that's been the biggest takeaway. And that's been the biggest piece of feedback I've gotten from everybody about it. And it, it was really cool because it, it wasn't what I expected to get out of it either. So overall, man, it was a really, really unreal experience. And there's so many things that I'm gonna apply to my business, my life going forward. And um, I was just glad I was able to share it with everybody else. It was really cool.